Hi, I'm Rolof, and I'm back with some new knowledge and findings. I spent the last few weeks getting familiar with PCB fabrication and the CAD software that supports that. Not the designing software, I think that takes a few years to master. So this video will focus on PCB fabrication and I will share my findings and steps to set up your PCBs in the software, exporting the toolpaths and milling them on the Kavira CNC machine. We will be using and comparing two different softwares, FlatCam and CopperCam, to create a double-sided PCB. These two PCB cam softwares seem to be mostly used in the community at the moment, but other softwares can also do the exact same job. Other designated PCB cam softwares include Fusion 360 and Carbide, but you can even make these in VCarve. If you are using a different cam package, you can also use our PCB to DXF converter on our website to uh, export your Gerber files into DXF so you can import into whatever software you're using. This is also quite helpful if you're wanting to mark or engrave information on your PCB boards or even use the laser cutter. Now I think copper cam and flat cam has got its place for now. The Kavira cam software that we are launching soon will have similar PCB milling features to these softwares. Now what makes these PCB cam softwares different to other cam softwares? It focuses only on the operation needed for PCB fabrication, which is engraving, hatching, drilling and cutouts. New features in these CAM softwares also include double-sided features, so you can easily mirror reference holes if you're doing a double-sided PCB, which we are going to do. The latest versions of CopperCam and FlatCam also support these double-sided features. Now let's compare FlatCam. It's a free open source PCB cam software. It has quite the intimidating interface for a beginner, but once you understand all the functions and the settings, it becomes quite a powerful software. I've been through a few ups and downs teaching myself how to use these softwares, and CopperCam is definitely the most understandable and basic software between the two. But when it comes to very specific parameters and personal preferences in production, FlatCam offers a far wider range of functions to do that. I've been getting a few crashes on FlatCam and some bugs, usually with larger files, but most of the crashes were solved by opening the software through Administrator or running it through Administrator. Another thing that was quite annoying about FlatCam is there is no undo button for when you delete something. So you kind of have to like re-import the files when you remove or delete a contour by accident. It also doesn't support auto tool changing, so there's quite a lot of manual workarounds to get your part to completion. The quality of the cuts were great, but it's definitely a more complicated process than CopperCam. Now CopperCam on the other hand, for me personally is the better option here, mostly because of the support of the auto tool changer and its user-friendly interface. I initially started with CopperCam, so that's probably also why I'm in favor of CopperCam. But like I mentioned before, it does not have the editing and parameter setting features you have in FlatCam. Another nice feature about CopperCam is that it shows you the final render of what your part will end up looking like. It's not 100% to render, but it seems to be quite accurate. Strangely, these PCB softwares does not simulate the toolpath like you get in other CAM softwares, which is unfortunate because that is usually where I pick up strange behavior in the toolpath and where I need to make some adjustments. CopperCam has a perpetual license. It's a cost of 80 euros and you'll have to purchase through a PayPal account and the uh, author just sends you a license. It has a free unlimited trial period, but it is very limited and it comes with some examples, which is good. So that's very helpful to test the software before you make the decision. So let's get right into using these softwares to make the PCBs. So first of all, we're just going to open CopperCam. And let me just close all these layers. And then I'm going to go File, New Circuit. And then you can see here, this is how they import. So you have the solder side, component side, and then your drills. The solder mask removal files is, is, is linked to that same folder. So um, I'll show you how to do that. You can just select that, but it's a different method to do that. So for the, for the solder, solder side, we're going to select the bottom. Top side, we're going to select the top, the component side. And then we're going to hit OK. Now it imported both those layers. So I just hit OK there. Now you can see the bottom layer is kind of a ghosted version of the top layer. So this is how the board would look like um, 
if you can see through the board. We're gonna mirror one of them now. Um, let's just import our additional file, which is the drills. Okay, the drills. We've got our drilling file here. We get okay. Now this is successfully imported. Just one thing to show you, if you wanna open like an additional file, this is the way that you export it from your PCB design software. There's lots of ways you can export your single layers and your different type of layers, but this is the type of format and the naming convention that you need to use when exporting from your PCB design software. Um, I have, don't have experience with the PCB design software. I'm just focusing on the cam side of things. So let's run through how to set this up. So first of all, it's just taking your parameters. So I'll go here to parameters, tool library, and just make sure everything that you have set up here is what is in the machine. The software needs to know what tool number it's using and what is the description of that. So just to check what we'll be needing for this board, we go to this file, this little button here, drill list. So, and then this shows you all the size of the holes that you have and the amount of holes that you have. Now for the paid copper cam version, it will show you all the holes, everything that you need here, but it won't necessarily export those holes. So on the, on the, free version of copper cam you have a limit of 25 contours and 25 drill holes so just something to keep in mind when you are using the software um, so then you just look at the diameter and do you have a bit that corresponds to that diameter now on a 0 0.4 hole i'm gonna cut a 0 0.5 hole if you're okay with that and the components uh, pins can still relate then that will be fine and you can just run through it here at the sizes that's a bit bigger is a 1.8 i've in my in my tool at in my machine at the moment is the 0 0.5 bit and the 0 0.8 bit so for the bigger holes it's going to actually mold those holes so it'll actually rotate to get your holes at the correct depth here you can select which different holes you want i think for this bigger holes i'm going to use an end mold just to save some time and also some strain on the smaller bit. But the, the one millimeter hole has got the 0 0.8 cylindrical bit, so that's fine. And then we just hit okay. And now we're gonna set up the rest of the parameters. So then you just make sure, I'll show you here what I did. So my second tool is the engraving tool. That's the V-bit 0 0.2 millimeter tip. Millimeter tip. Um, and then the diameter of the bit at the top and then the angle it runs down with and then the point of the bit so that's quite that's a quite important value just make sure that that's the correct width and then you go we go through the rest of this so this is the 0.8 corn bit we'll be using this for most of the drilling and then we've got our in the metal we won't use that here we have on tool number five we have the uv solder mask removal tool and then tool number six i've added a 0 0.5 corn bit so then we just hit okay and next thing is just to make sure that your output is correct now we are looking at the g code that's what we want that's the, what the machine reads iso standard and then you've got some settings here just to make sure that you're saving it to the correct file and some speed settings over here. So I'll just hit okay there. And now let's break down this, this interface. So at the top here, we have our layers. So this talks to this little uh, description of your file here. So this is the bottom layer. This is the top layer. And then we've got our drill holes. So firstly, we're gonna start with the, with the first layer, which is the bottom layer. So there's a few ways of doing this, but I always just like to start at the beginning and finish at the top of the board. So I will start with the layer number one, which is the bottom, but we're going to have to flip this because this is, will be our first. This will be our first cut on the bottom side. So we're going to, we're going to do our drill holes, do the engraving on the bottom side. Then we're going to do the flip of our board. And then that's going to do the engraving of the top side, the solder mask removal and everything else we need to do and the cutout as well. So what I'm going to do with file number one is go to file and I'll flip this horizontally. 
I can see some of it's not going to look like it lines up. You've seen the that hole has been mirrored that side. So, but we also, but I see what happened now is the holes actually mirrored together with that first file. So we have to mirror the holes back because we're going to be doing the holes at the end of it. Only reason for doing that is if you flip it um, and you already have holes, if you're doing the probing of the opposite side, the, the probe might go into one of the holes and you might have some unleveled areas. So I'll just rotate this back. Now you can see this lines up, these two lines up together now, the top with the drills. And then we have our opposite side, the bottom side, which we'll be doing first. Now, firstly, let's set up our flip holes. So we're gonna go to this little button here, we click on that, and then this talks to the top, the top hole. So I'll just select an area just with a little bit of space above it. We're gonna center it now. So I'll just select an area there. Here they give you the distance between the center point of this hole and the center point of this hole. So I'm just gonna call this a round number minus 80. Hit okay. So we know that the distance between that hole and that hole is minus 80. But now the distance between that and that is not the same now. So let's first go to file. Um, sorry, I'd add centering holes here. And now this is where you also can add the holes manually and then recenter circuit. Now you can see the circuit has moved to the center of these holes and the distance between that hole and that line and that hole and that line is exactly the same now. Next thing is going to dimensions, file dimensions. Then we just want to offset um, some space around the whole board just to make sure that our bit and our clamps have space to run. So we know the thickness is 1.6. I will just give it a margin of 10 millimeter all around. So then I hit OK. And now everything has been resized, centered, and ready for this side to be programmed. So if you go back to dimensions, then you'll get the size of what your board needs to be. So there's a X height is 100 millimeters, X width is 73 millimeters. So then we just hit OK. Now you just have to remember that size if you want to go. If you're gonna cut some stock, so then you just remember that size. Then we'll hit OK, and we move on to the next step. Now we're going to use this bottom point as our reference, um, the origin of this cut file. So um, we have to set this as the origin. To do that, you go to this first button over here, you select here, and then the origin point, I'll plot that manually. And I'll just select this hole and you see that white arrow automatically moves to there. Now we have that the center of our board and it's also the origin of our first operation. So what we'll do is we'll manually measure on the machine, we'll manually measure that area to get the size of where we need to place this board. So another thing to just check before you run this file is just going to parameters and the selected tools. Now this will talk to what tool it will use for what operation. So the engraving tool that we'll use on this side will, will be cutting at a depth of 0.1. We know that the copper is 0 0.03 thick and then we're gonna cut that at a depth of 0 0.1 millimeters with a zero margin and engraving speed is 10 millimeters per second. We'll do the same with the hatching and that's the same settings. The cutting tools, that'll be cutting out the, the, the board at the end. Here you can say just the cutting depth, I'm gonna make that 1.7. Cutting speed of three millimeters per second. And then here is the centering holes. We're gonna change that to our end mole. Hole diameter is 4.2 millimeters and the extra depth is going down into the spool board by five millimeter just so we can actually locate that pin. Here is the drilling tools. Um, I usually just select this one. I think it's um, preset selected because this is the most, this is the option that makes the most sense. If it is a smaller tool, it will use circular boring to create the size of the hole that you have, that you require. Um, using this setting might give you two large holes. We're using this settings. Um, will also give you different size holes that you actually require. So here you can change your setting. The drilling depth is at 
boring speed five millimeters per second and then we're gonna hit okay then we're gonna first do our we're gonna first do our contour calculation so let's do this side we're gonna do the contour of this side I'm only going to do the one side for now hit okay and then it's gonna build our draft contours it might take some time Okay, so here we have our first operation. We've got our two holes, it's at the top and the bottom, and then the engraving on this side. Um, if you need to do some hatches, this is the option that you can do. So all the areas where there's a line of holes, you can actually take. Let me just show you the option, what happens if you do this. In some cases, you don't need to do the hatches. In some cases, it is quite um, valuable and makes it a lot of easier when adding your solder to the to the board now you can see it just cleared some areas on the inside um, of where you don't need any copper just to make it a little bit more neat so I'll keep it this way and then we're gonna go into programming the first side so we're gonna go to mole option and then on this side, keeping in mind the order of operations, we're going to do the centering holes, and then we're going to do the engraving on layer one, and then we'll do the hatching on layer one. We're not going to go to the cutout, we're not going to do anything else, it's just going to be that operation. And then here you can change some more speeds, just make sure that your Z0 point is on the circuit surface and not the machine bed. ZY0 point is on the white cross, which, which is set to that bottom hole. And then we hit OK. Gives you the G code then for this file. We'll save this. You got a file saver, I'll save this on the desktop. This will be sample board. one okay so be happy with that then next thing that we'll do is that we'll move on to layer two so now we're gonna have to do after that's been cut we're going to flip the board. We're going to line it up with the same orientation holes that we had it previously. Then we're going to do the engraving on this side. Then we're going to do the hatching on this side. Then we're going to apply the solder mask. Then we're going to remove the solder mask with another file. Then we're going to, at the end, do the drilling of the holes and also the cutout. So keeping in mind that operations, let's start with the engraving on this side. So we have already set up all our parameters. We're happy with that. So on, if you selected this layer, we're just gonna go back to contour. We're going to apply to this layer. We're using bit number two. So we just hit okay on this side. And then oh, when that's done, we're gonna go to the hatching option. And then we're just gonna say card contour again. And then we just hit okay. Now I'm just gonna clean up all the void and areas. Okay, then that's the engraving. What I'm going to do is with the cutout, I'm going to flip this also. I see this this doesn't change. So if you go back to layer one, then that makes sense. So that knows that's the cutout. So we just let's just recalculate the hatches because the cutout was still the opposite side. So let's just recalculate the hatches and then we'll see what it looks like then. Here we go, now the cutout's on the correct side, the holes is on the correct side, and the copper is also programmed on this side, and the hatches. So now we're going to go to mole again. We've already done the centering holes, we don't have to do that again. 
So then we're going to engrave the layer two. We're going to hatch layer two. So that will be the next step. So we'll be engraving and then hatching. Then we'll do the uh, application of the solder mask. And then we'll do the removal of the solder mask. So let's just hit OK for the engraving. And then we'll file, save as. Operation two, op two. And then we're just gonna go back to mold just to separate the cutouts and the drills. Then we'll do the drilling of the small holes, drilling of the bigger holes, and then the cutting out of the part. Hit OK. And that's a small file save as operation three we're gonna hit save so we got the three files now we've got the one side we got the opposite side and then we got the cutouts and the drilling now the last thing that we'll do is we'll just create the, the solder mask removal files so to do that you just go to machining cut stents cut mold coating on pads then we're going to do the one side um, firstly you go to which layer you want to firstly you go to what layer you want to do this on so if you want to do layer one you go to machining mold coating on pads this is now the bottom side you're going to say what depth are you cutting it at we've done some experiments to check that 0 0.5 depth actually works quite well um, we're gonna hit OK and that's gonna give you file save as desktop this will be op1 solder mask removal and then you go to layer number two and then you go back to machining more coating on pads settings correct Hit OK, and then here we're going to say we're going to save this as desktop operation two solder mask removal. So at the end of the day, you're going to sit with five different files to cut this PCB: double-sided solder mask on both sides, and then the drilling and the cutouts. So we'll just go back here. There's our five files. We'll then import that to the controller software and then start running and we'll run that sample. So we'll just start here by measuring and marking out our reference hole location. This is mostly if you're not using anchor point one as your reference point. So I'll just mark this out just to show you how to calculate that that's already how we calculated in the software. Then you have this little mark in my case i'm using anchor point one so i don't necessarily have to do that but if you're placing it in a different position you'll have to do this then i'll just use some double-sided tape to apply the pcb board to our spoil board just make sure that it's as level as possible um, and also clean the surface before you start probing then I'll select the file, I'll just set the offset um, from my reference hole, which is at the bottom, like we just measured on our board and did in the software as well. And then we hit scan margin, auto leveling, and also the auto Z probe, and then continue cutting. It'll first do the contour cutting and then it'll do a final pass which is the hatching and graving just to clear out some areas. Then I'll just clean this up a bit, have a little sand and then I'll continue to add the solder white. I definitely put on too much solder mask here. So I'll just start with rolling the solder mask on 
and then I'm going to try to remove some of it by just using a, and dabbing it with a with a cloth. And then I'll just use the roller again to flatten it out. Clean this up a bit, let it dry, get the UV light, and then it'll end up looking like this. Next step will be to remove the solder mask. I took some close-ups here just to show you what it needs to look like. This is quite a Quite a, it did quite a good job on this PCB at a depth of 0 0.5 on the solder removal tool. Once that's done, we'll remove the board from the spoil board and we'll do our rotational flip. And then we'll start with the engraving on the bottom, on the top side. Just flatten this out again. We're gonna have to do a scan margin and a Z probe and an auto level on the other side. And then when it's finished engraving, it will look something like this. Then we'll add the solder mask again. Once again, I put on a little bit too much on this side as well. I think it's quite, it's still a work in progress to get this uh, flatness of the solder mask ready. I'm going to try another dab method here, just to remove some of it. Then after that's dried, we're gonna remove that solder mask on the next file, and that'll do the drilling of the holes also continue to the cutout. Then we'll pop this off the spill board and let's have a look at our first piece of see on the red side solder mask was a little bit too much the green side I think was quite level and quite even so we successfully finished our first double-sided PCB I'll do some sanding and then this is the final results Okay, let's get started with FlatGam. So the first thing to do is just to open up the software. I've noticed I've been getting some crashes, so, but uh, it eliminates most of the crashes if you run it through Administrator. So I'll just do that for now. Not 100% sure what's causing the crashes, but um, it's been quite annoying. And uh, yeah, just a quick tip is just to open it through administrator if you're having this problem okay so first of all let's just look at the interface um, we'll just go to preferences first before we carry on with everything anything else so just to make sure that you're importing in the correct measurement of units units of measurement um, I use millimeter so just check that you've got it here I'd like to keep it at advanced just to keep me to give me a little bit more options and then you've got a few seconds you can play around with um, interface preferences 
You can make it a dark interface. There's lots of pref preferences and settings. Pers personal preference settings you can go through. Um, and at the top here, you can see there's different tabs. This is your general Gerber file import settings. Um, Excelon settings, which is your drawing files, your geometry settings, CNC job tools. I'll pause here for a little bit. So here is where you set up um, all your standard um, operations and the tools that you use with each operation and the speeds and everything. So um, isolation tooling, this is the engraving tool path. So the tool diameter here. Now this is something you need to work out. Um, the software has a calculator for you. So just go to calculators and then it brings up this little tab here. So if your this is calculates the diameter of your tool. So if your point of your VBIT is 0.1, the tip of your VBIT is 0.1, the angle is 30 degrees, we're cutting at a depth of minus 0.1, and then it calculates and give you this value. And then this value you can just copy and paste up here and here. And then this is a V-shaped bit, tool order no, and then you can change some more settings here if you want. If you want to change the passes, give the thicknesses of your isolation contours a little bit more thickness and give it a little bit more overlap. You can up that here, but I'll keep the standard settings as it is. Two-sided tool options. So this is the drill diameter of your, uh, when you're doing a double-sided flip. So mine is the tool, the drill diameter is 3.175, which is the eighth of an inch bit that we'll use for the two-sided holes. Don't have to mirror anything there then you have some cutout tool options now this is the tool bit that we're using uh, for the cutout it's going to be 0 0.8 we're cutting at a depth of minus 1.8 that's fine you can also go to 7 i know the thickness of the board is 1.6 so minus 1.8 is fine multi-depth yes i'm going to say multi-depth um, at 0.6 just do not put too much strain on the 0.8 tool uh, on the 0.8 corn bit and then that's on the cutout then the drilling tool options so this is when you're going to be drilling the holes so we kind of get a depth of 1.7 you can also go 1.8 travel z that's a safe z that's fine here we have some panelized options so this is where you can do multiple multiple panels or multiple pcbs on a single board this is where you set up your standard parameters for the panelizing options. Then you got some NCC tools, painting tools. We'll be using this for the hatching and we also use this in cases of removing the solder mask. So this is a feature, our tool diameter here is the same as the V-bit. And then you have some film tool options, transfer tool options, and some more you can go through here. Uh, next, you have some more tool options here on your tools. You can go through that. And then utilities is quite a uh, neat feature just to check if you're exporting your files from your PCB design software, you could just refer to this list. So when, you, when you're exporting your drill files, it needs to be in any of those um, folder types, any of these folder types when you're doing your uh, contours and your G-code file associations. This is what it exports it to, and it's also how it can import. So when you're done with that, you just hit apply and save, and then we'll start setting up everything here. Let me just open up some more toolbars here. So let's start importing our files. I'll just open my Gerber files. Now this is how I have exported it from my PCB design software. So I'm just going to select the top and the bottom, solder top, solder bottom, hit OK. And then it will import automatically. Now here you also have three tabs. Now this is your main tab, your project tab. So you can see it imported now as all the same colors. So I usually just, just to know what I'm working with. Just run down this list and I'll run down the color list.
Next, we will just import our drill files. Now here you can see I imported the file with a scale of, of 10. Um, so I'll just do some editing of this layer to get it correct and to match with the other layers. I'll fast forward this part of it. Let's go back to editor, say so exit editor, save these changes, and then you can see here they're both the same color now. So I'm just going to set the one color to brown. So the brown is the correct one. I can delete, I can delete this bottom one, which is this unscaled one. So everything's lined up here. Let's first move this whole thing. So um, I usually think of this corner as my anchor point one so you can also use anchor point two you can do a, a manual location as well so i'll just select all of all of the all of the files hit m on the keyboard and then i'll just move this i left a little space at the bottom here because we want to create a, a mirroring flip hole over here and a mirroring flip hole over here to set up your alignment holes, you go to tool options, you go to two-sided PCB, and then over here we're gonna select two points in the center of this board and uh, with the same distance here and here to create our flipping points. So I will select just this uh, top file as my Gerber file then I'll find the exact center of that. So if you say calculate bounds value, that is this this corner of your of the geometry of the Gerber file you over there, and then the max is the x y value over here. So the centroid is going to be a value that we will copy. I'll just Control C, and then over here we are using it as a box point that we are because we are not flipping it as a book we're actually just flipping it in place so we'll use it we'll flip it, we're flipping on the x-axis um, so here the drill coordinates I will just paste this value in over here and then I'll just manually have a look at where we are so this is at 80 on Y so I think that about there if I look at this value over here uh, I would pick 81 seems like a good x coordinate I mean y coordinate so then I'll just put on 81 over here and we will create the Exelon object now you have two holes which is uh, in the immediate center of this board at the top and at the bottom this is still our origin so we will still use this um, as the origin but as long as the board is flipped in the exact same position uh, we'll be fine doing the opposite sides like that so if you go back to project you'll see that we have now an alignment tools file here I'll just double click on that if you need to do milling so if you have a bit let's say 3.1750 but the bit the hole is four millimeters then you actually will select this bit and then you'll go to the milling diameter that you want to this to and then you actually mill this hole for this example we will just be doing a direct drilling so you just go to direct drill um, just change your settings here we're going to minus five so I've got enough room to just uh, locate these pins into the spoil board um, if you need to do multiple depths, we're not going to do that now on this. So that's where you change that. And then we'll say generate CNC object. Um, then you save CNC code. And we're just going to create a folder here. New folder. Save that here. Let's check. 
We got it dished off. So that's the first operation. I'm actually going to put this one in the beginning. Just so that if you're making more files, you'll still know the order of operations. Okay, so that's the first operation done. I'm just gonna delete one of these. Just that, I mean delete. Still got the other one here. Next thing that we'll do is the isolation on this bottom side. So we'll just double click on our bottom side and then we're gonna go to isolation routing. Now here, once again, you set up your tool diameter like we like you do in your calculator at the top here. Um, this is already set up. So that is the correct diameter of that bit. Um, that is correct. Here, if you want to create a more thickness, and then you can, you can up the passes here, but for this, I don't have to change this. Um, and then we're going to generate geometry. Oh, that's sorry. This is wrong. This should be 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Sorry, here I read this wrong diameter here. Let's generate this geometry again. Let's delete the first one. Yeah. I can see, look at the red lines. Just bordering all the green areas. And that's exactly what we want. And it's also cutting a little border on the outside as well, which is nice. So then you go to this, double click, and now from the geometry, you can see we created the geometry now. From that geometry, we're gonna create the CNC job. So just the properties, let's create the CNC job. If you, after you checked all your parameters over here, if you're happy with that, we'll generate the CNC job. Then it turns blue, all the borders, and that's what we want. So we'll save the CNC code to two, bottom, save then we have our so we'll do the drilling holes then we do the um, isolation routing and next we're going to apply the solder mask on the board and then after that you're going to remove the solder mask on that side so we're going to go to solder mask now here we have to go to a new function which is the painting tool so what the painting tool does it takes the inside of all your contours and then it actually changes it to almost like a hatching. So this is 0 0.2. So that's been set up correctly. That's right. Overlap 20%. Let's generate the geometry. We'll see what happens here. Now you can see, it's not really easy to see, but you can see on the inside of this block and of the inside of all these areas that's created like a little hatching contour. So the geometry has been made. If you look back, here's the, there's the geometry. Now you can just go through all these settings here again. And from here you can generate your CNC job. And then you can see all the places that we're going to be milling out. Or just re removing the solder mask has now been changed to blue. So let's save this. CNC code, we go to, we'll call this number three, hit save, then we have our third file. Now the one side of this job is now completed, so I'll just disable all of these, disable, disable, I will disable the geometry, disable, the alignment holes we're also done with, disable the bottom, and disable the top. Now we're going to do the top isolation routing. And then we'll do the solder mask removal on the on the top side. Now after the board has been flipped, let's we'll start with this isolation routing. So 
So we'll just uh, generate the geometry. You will have a look, is this correct geometry? So look at all the red lines that you've created around the geometry. So back to geometry, our geometry has been combined. Then we're gonna just create our CNC job from here. Then you see everything turns blue. We'll save the CNC code as top, but we call this number four. Hit OK. And then we go back to our solder. Um, let's just hide all the other ones. Disable, disable. So this is our hatching at the top. So what we'll do is we'll create, uh, let's double click on this. We go to tool and we're gonna paint on the insides of these. Um, our tool is the same as this one. No, delete. That's our tool diameter. We'll generate the geometry. And we just look on the inside, you see all these lines has been created. Then we're gonna generate the geometry. Let's go back to project. I've done that twice now. Double click on that and then we'll create the CNC file from here if we're happy with all these settings. Generate CNC job object. We hit that. And then I'll just inspect all the solder that's going to be removed. Make sure that everything is in place and everything looks okay. And then we'll carry on to the next step. This will, we save the CNC code, this will be number five. We hit save. And then we have to finally do some drilling and then we'll do the outside cut, the cutout. Go back to project. We'll select no, our top one. And then we're gonna say cutout. We're gonna cut at the depth of minus 1.8. We will do multi-depth at 0.6 millimeter per pass. I'll do a little bit less. I don't want to put too much strain on that bit. And then we'll... If you want to create some tabs, then you can just do that over here. Then you can automatically put four tabs and it will skip, have an opening there, opening there, and opening there, and opening there. My board is double-sided tape to the, to the spool board, so I don't need any tabs. Then we're gonna generate the geometry. There's our cutout. We go back, use the cutout, double-sided. Double-click on that, tool diameter, that's our cutting tool bit. Multiple div, everything has been set, and then we generate the CNC code, and then we'll save that CNC code as number six. Sorry, I'll call this number seven, because I still have to do the draws, which will be number six. So we'll save that project. Okay, next thing we'll do is the drilling holes. So let's just enable this, and then I'll double click on that. Then you can see here, this is all the amount of holes that we have and the size of those holes. Now uh, here is where you kind of set up, you make sure you have the right bits for your machine for all these holes. Now here you can decide which bits you're using for what holes. So for these two holes, I'll be using a 0.5 millimeter bit. For these holes, I'll be using the 0.8 corn bit. And then for these three holes, we'll use the larger bit. So. So I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna delete all of these in the Exelon editor. So I'll just hit delete on the keyboard here. I'll exit the editor and save. And then we'll set up the drilling of this for the 0.5 bit, and then we'll create the CNC object. So we're just drilling with this. So these are the these are the 0.5 millimeter bits. So generate CNC object. We'll save the CNC 
code and this will be number 6.5 corn bit Point five millimeter corn bit, save that. Then we go back to our drills. Then we'll edit these. Now we've done these two. Delete those. I'll do all of these with the point eight. Exit editor, save that. Then we'll go to drilling. Generate the CNC object. Save the CNC code. This will be cut number seven point eight millimeter corn bit. Save that, and then we'll go back again to the original, and then we'll go to edit this. And then we'll delete all these ones. Exit editor. Yes. Then we've got that drills all drilling tool. And we'll generate the CNC object of only those three holes. And then we'll save the CNC code. This will be called number eight. Point. No. This is the three. Eighth inch. Let's just call it eighth inch. Draw, save, and then finally we'll do the, and then finally we'll do the cutout. So I'll just go to check the files. Desktop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is nine. So you can see this is quite a few manual operations, um, but there is some steps that will follow to combine them and to make them readable for the readable for the machine. Last step to take before sending the files to the machine is just going through each of them and then just setting a tool into position for each of them and then just deleting some code for the machine to understand what you're going to be doing here. So for the alignment rules, um, what we have to do here, you will find the command T1 and M6. Now the file that is exported from Flatcam gives you a value between these two numbers. So you remove that and you take that M6 and you move that T1 M6 and then you save, save. Then it will run the machine. Without doing that, the machine will give you an error and actually clear your height map that you've created from doing the uh, auto leveling. So we'll run through each of them. We'll go to bottom. Now this is the engraving file at the bottom. So we'll go here again. You'll see it's, this one has been changed or I already changed this one. But what we'll do here, we will change this to tool number two because it's the V-bit that does the bottom engraving. So then we'll just save that as well. We go to solder bottom. We will use for this guy, we will use tool number five, which is the solder remask tool. So T5 M6. We'll file, save that. Then we will go the top part. This is gonna be engraved with tool number two. So we'll do that again here, tool number two. File, save. Solder on the top, we'll do with tool number five. Tool number five, M6, file, save. Then we're going to do our drill bits. Now this is going to use the 0 0.5, the 0.5 millimeter drill bit, which is tool number six. So this is T6. 
can we remove those values file save then we go to point 8 which is point 8 bit we'll use tool Tool number three, and we remove these values. Save, and then the eighth inch, which is the drilling file, we go back again here, and that is tool one for the final three holes, tool five, and save that. And then your top art cut out. This will also use a 0.8 bit. So that will be tool number three. And we'll change that value over there. File, save. But what you can do with these um, is combine them. If you, have, if you don't have pauses between your files, you can actually combine them. So for this one, I will combine all the drilling files together and the cutout. So I'll take the first file I'll open the second file and then I'll control a copy and then at the bottom of this file you will paste then we'll take this one control a at the bottom of this file you can paste and at the bottom of this file, control A, control, S, control V, and then I'll just file, save that as combined. And hit save, then I'll close all of these. Then I've got my new file, which is over here combined which is all the drill files so this combines all these files together then I can delete either these and then that's the combined file for all the drilling at the end of it so we'll just load these files to the controller software and then the initial file we will uh, auto level scan margin and auto Z probe and then it'll automatically continue to to do the first cut and this is the result. Next, we'll give it a little sand um, just to clear up some of the burrs and edges. Give it a little clean up again. And then we'll start applying the solder mask. So when I started cutting the solder bottom, I see it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't programmed at any depth. So then I just, uh, so what I'll do is just I'll open the file, just have a look what's going on here. And you can see it wasn't set to any depth. And when you go to the Z value over here, it's not set to any depth. So what we'll do is we'll change this to 0 0.05, cut Z minus 0 0.05, and then all these values, G, 0, 1, Z value, we're gonna replace that. So we just go to this function here. You can copy and paste this value because you have it you have it all the way down here as well so there's that same that same z height so it's it's throughout the whole code you can see this so what we're going to replace that value with go away g um, with that value then we just say replace all Let's close this, just have a look if it's been replaced. G0.1, that's been replaced. And it's been replaced everywhere. So I'm just gonna re-upload this file. So this was the results that we got from our initial file, which my height depth was set to um, minus 0.1 millimeter. So definitely not recommended as it takes away some of the copper. Of my recommendation is it is a solder mask removal depth of 0 0.05 after flipping the board and cutting the opposite side this was the results so this cut was programmed at a depth of 0 0.5 which worked quite well 
You can even listen to the machine. You can hear if it's taking away copper when it's doing the solder mask removal. So just something to keep in mind. This file will finish up this combined file that we've put together and it will do the drilling of the holes and also the cutout. At the end of all this, this is the result. Obviously too little solder mask on this one and less finger marks to test if the solder mask is cured. And then the border of the cut which is still a solvable issue but overall both softwares can do the job. These are not professional P PCB boards but we can get real close. This video was a real tricky one for me as I have had no experience with both of these softwares and also PCB knowledge. My personal preference is definitely CopperCam due to how simple and intuitive the software is. FlatCam gave me quite a few crashes which you can expect from a free software, but that's just my opinion. If you have any questions, comments or opinions, I would love to hear that down below in the comment section. Our details and social media is in the video description and like and subscribe to see some more of these videos. Cheers.